Hero Chapter 6 It wasn't just people the gladiators had to fight in the amphitheater. Sometimes there were beasts. These were the ultimate kinds of battles for the gladiator. The thing about battling animals was that they were unpredictable. You couldn't count on them behaving like men or other gladiators at all. You had to have your wits about you. And after what had happened at school, I thought I was ready. When I went out to Clarendon Road after school for another epic battle, I didn't take my gladiator helmet because I was going to the recreation field straight after. I wasn't sure whether Warren really meant that he wanted an actual gladiator on his side. Maybe he just meant someone like me. Brave or something like that. Anyway, I wore my bike helmet instead, because it was easy to pretend it was a gladiator helmet. I rode into the arena. Jupiter was on his feet. Like a tower block in a toga, he loomed in the sky at the end of Clarendon Road. It's time! He boomed to the audience. They were climbing down the amphitheater steps, rushing to the edge of the arena to get a better look. After what happened at school, I felt like a gladiator on a whole other level. I nodded, held my hands up. Okay, okay, I said. Y'all need to stay back. I don't want people getting hurt. It all felt so easy. Send in the bear, Jupiter roared. The audience caught their breath as the bear padded through the open gate and into the arena. I smelled the sharp smell of him. He huffed, snorted, growled. He lumbered in and showed me his broad head and his rugged side, rippling with thick hair. He was huge, but I wasn't scared because I knew I was quicker than him. I swerved around him on my bike, going close, pulling away as he swiped his massive paws. I turned, raised my sword, checked the crowd. On their feet now, they roared my name and I knew I could have defeated that bear with them cheering me on. Except Grizzly Allen came out of his house and leaned over his wall. And you don't want someone else watching, unless it's George, of course. Grizzly was bundled up in his coat and scarf and cap against the cold winter evening. He beckoned me over. I used my heels to slow down. Jack Pepper peeped through the bars of the gate, his tail swish, and I crouched down to say hello. Off to see George, Grizzly said. I heard he's not well. Grizzly was often outside his wall, talking to anyone who passed, which is why he probably knew what was going on most of the time. Jack Pepper panted, as if he had already been running along the street beside me. No, just playing around. Don't want to catch anything, eh? Grizzly winked. He folded his arms, which were too thick to fit easily together. You've heard about the meteor passing over, he said. A fragment of our far universe come to shine on us. A little magic to light us up. Perhaps bring us a bit of good fortune, eh? I think he said that because all the adults were gloomy around here. Even Dad sometimes. Business hadn't been so good. Like at all other shops in town. More had closed than open. And they even knocked one crumbling building down. Mom says winter makes people sad, I said. So it does, Grizzly murmured. Feels like time and the light forget us for a while. He looked up. Oh, that space up there, he said. Look at it all, miles and miles above us, a never-ending place, full of possibilities. He smiled at the depth of the sky. When you look up there, do you feel like there's more than what our eyes can see, eh, son? Yeah, I said, because I did. Good, he said. Now do an old man a favor and take Jack Pepper out with you. There's a good lad. My legs won't manage it today. Jack Pepper had that look about him again, like he knew what I was thinking. What time is it, I said. Grizzly pulled back his sleeve and showed me his watch, as big as Dad's alarm clock. I still had some time before seven. Okay, come on, Jack, I said. Grizzly opened his gate. That little white dog came right over and stood next to my bike, looking up like he was ready, and he knew what we had to do. Grizzly turned and shuffled back towards the open front door. Door will be unlocked, so just drop him off when you're done. He leaned on the porch and looked back over his stiff shoulder. Take good care of him, he said. But I wasn't entirely sure that he was talking to me. And don't be going down to the recreation field just now. I don't know why he said that. I guessed it was to do with Jack Pepper being used to walking around the block and not in the open fields. There's something about dogs that isn't like people at all. The way they're kind of ready and willing. 
Straight away, I knew Jack Pepper didn't think that pretending to be a gladiator was a waste of time. There's a bear, Jack, I whispered. He's here somewhere, waiting to ambush us. I pushed up on my pedals, felt my bike as if it was part of me, twisting and turning and speeding up, Jack running alongside. You're going to have to be quick and not go too near. Just do what I say, stick close, and you'll be fine. Jack Pepper joined in, leaping beside me, ears twitching as if he was listening out for the bear. We were like a couple of soldiers, advancing in formation, and I didn't have to ask him, he just moved like my shadow. We approached the bear, growling, huffing, and breathing his hot, bitter breath into the frosty evening. That way, Jack, I said. We separated. Jack distracted the bear, dancing around him, barking and yipping until we cornered him outside Miss Pardot's house and roared at the beast until he lay down and rolled over for us. Jack sat beside me in the glow of the streetlight and gazed up like he could see what I could see. The winners! Jupiter bellowed and punched his mighty thumb up to the sky. All arms went up. Everyone cheered my name. Leo! 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 Bow, Jack, bow, I said. They love us. Jack wagged his tail. Look at us, I said, grinning down at him. We're heroes. When I looked up again, Jupiter had reached down and touched the head of the statue of the lion by his throne. I saw the lion shake the dust from its fur. I saw it open its mouth, come to life and roar. I took Jack back to Grizzlies and opened the door for him. He went in but stopped and looked over his shoulder at me. He didn't want to go home just yet. I heard him whine when I closed the door, but there was somewhere else I had to be. Warren and all his friends waited in the shadow of the ragged flint and moss of the ancient Roman wall along the edge of the wreck. Warren walked out from among them, slow and easy. There was a lot of whispering, which for some reason sounded louder in the dark. With only the moon and stars and a couple of street lights making yellowy circles around us. Wasn't sure you'd come, Warren said. He sighed. Thing is, some of us aren't sure you've got what it takes to hang out with us. You're going to have to prove yourself first. I thought I already had, I said. You have to do something else to prove you're one of us, he said. The boys parted, showed what they had for me. You have to push it down the field and send it into the pond. I looked at the old granny mobility scooter that they'd found, and it bothered me. Whose is it, I said. It was abandoned out the back of the pharmacy, Warren said. We took it, hid it, and waited until dark. Waited for someone like you. Why do I have to do it, I said. We have to be sure you're on our side, Warren said. It doesn't work then? It's not somebody's? It's useless. We're doing everyone a favor by getting rid of it, cleaning up the town. There was a ripple of laughter, but Warren silenced the others. He paced up and down. Fame, he said. They say it's a 15-minute thing. He draped his arm over my shoulders. His armpit was a bit rank. But you want more of that, don't you, Leo? You're proving that you've got what it takes to be one of us. I wasn't going to be a gladder in the real world. Not when the nearest we have are boxes and wrestlers. I wanted to be like a gladiator, though. I wanted other people to think I was fierce, brave, strong, and worthwhile which was entirely different. I dropped my bike, took an uneasy breath, and walked over to the scooter. They couldn't see what I could see. Me, the victor, and the abandoned chariot of a defeated gladiator. Leo, they chanted again. The moon made a shimmering target on the dark pond, like a trapdoor in the amphitheater where all the destruction, the losers, the broken and defeated things go. I pushed hard against the mobility scooter and ran with it down the slope and let it go. The scooter tipped over into the pond. It bubbled and sank, disappeared into the black depths. I punched the air. They laughed, roared, and cheered my name. It made my teeth tingle. This was being a gladiator for real.